This is an image of a Laplacian pyramid uh, down below here and the Gaussian pyramid up here. So remember that the um, these are the residuals between every image and its expanded approximation. So the difference between this guy blown up to the original size minus this gives us this. And so these residual images are effectively the Laplacian of a Gaussian. So one advantage of doing this is that um, it's easier for compression. If you look at the histogram of one of the original images in this sequence, um, it's all spread out like this. But if we look at the histogram of one of the Laplacian images, the residual images, it's tightly clustered around zero. So most values are close to zero, few are negative, few are positive. And it turns out that it's much easier to compress um, an image composed of values that are close to zero than values that are spread out all over here. Let's do an example. I'd like to show the creation of a Gaussian pyramid and Laplacian pyramid and then the reconstruction from the um, from the pyramid. So we'll use these functions here in MATLAB um, to um, apply a low-pass filter. We'll use IM filter, in this case a Gaussian, and then this does the subsampling. So it uh, subsamples every second row, every second column. Or we can also use MATLAB's IM resize function in the image processing toolbox. This applies a low-pass filter prior to subsampling. So we just call IM resize with the scale factor that we want. And then to upsample, we can use IM resize again with a scale factor of 2. And I'll use the option nearest for nearest neighbor, which will just uh, replicate uh, pixels in 2 by 2 blocks and not do any interpolation. And this is the whole program here. Um, reads in an image, constructs the um, the Gaussian low-pass versions, displays that, um, up, um, I'm sorry, scales up the uh, approximations, computes the residuals between the approximations and the originals, and um, and this does that computation of adding up all the residuals together with the smallest approximation to get a reconstructed original. And finally, we take the difference between the original image and the reconstructed original and look to see what the maximum value in that is. So let me just pull that up here in MATLAB got that code already entered. This is cell mode, so I'm just going to execute um, a cell here. Okay, so the first thing I did was to construct the Gaussian pyramid, which looks like this. And next I'll uh, evaluate this cell. Let's see here. Whoops. Okay, so this one um, creates the Laplacian pyramid. Okay. And finally, we'll go ahead and um, reconstruct the um, original. Um, using this code right here. Okay, so that's the reconstructed original. Compare that to the actual original. And I also displayed the maximum error between the two. Uh, as you can see, it's zero. All right, some applications of pyramids. Um, I already talked about image compression. Motion analysis is a good one. Uh, using a coarse-defined strategy, we track objects in the uh, coarse level images, the small approximation images. Um, and then if we find it there, we can 
use that as a um, search region in a, in a higher resolution image to keep the whole cost low. We can also do texture analysis um, over windows of varying sizes. And uh, we can also do image splining where we take uh, images uh, that are part of a mosaic and piece them together um, so that their seams, the, the borders between them, don't show. So I'd like to talk about that last application, splining. So again, this is the, the uh, problem of merging two images together so that they have a smooth seam. So here are two images, a left part and a right part of a scene. This is an aerial photograph. And what we'd like to do is to um, gradually transition from left to right so that that seam is not visible. A simple approach would be simply to blur that or, or blend that um, in a narrow border between the two images. For example, um, in this region, take pixels, the pixel values from the left. Here we use the pixel values from the right. And in this border region, we blend um, the two values using a weighted sum like this. So here's an example of how that would work. Here, here's two images of the same scene. Um, taking the left half from this image and the right half of it, this image and putting them together, you can see that we have a scene like that. So if we use that approach of blending the two in a narrow transition zone, um, the seam is still pretty visible right here. So if we make the seam wider, um, as shown here, the seam is not visible. However, now we have um, duplicated points. For example, a star that was a single point in this image um, is, is double in this image. So that's not good. So a better approach is to use Laplacian pyramids to do the splining. And the idea is pretty simple. We take the two images, let's call them A and B, we construct the Laplacian pyramid for each image, call it LA and LB. Then we create a splined pyramid by averaging pixels along the center line. So take, a, take level L um, in, the, in the combined image, right? So if we are to the left of the center line, the left half, we use the values from the left Laplacian pyramid. If we're to the right of the center line, we use the values from the right Laplacian pyramid. If we're exactly on the center line, we blend those two values here. And we do that for every level in the pyramid. And finally, we'll reconstruct the image from this uh, splined pyramid here. So the advantage of this is that at very high levels of the pyramid, a single, the single center line, that single column wide line, represents a fairly wide area of the image. And so we're, we're blending the two um, images uh, at a very coarse level. But when we uh, get down to the very fine levels, this center line represents only a very narrow part of the image. And so we're just blending the portions of the image at high frequencies only in that narrow part. So this is a result of doing that. Um, here are two images, a left and a right, and here is the splined image as a result of doing the Laplacian splining. You can also do this for any type of shape, not just a, um, a left and a right half. Here are two images that we want to blend around this border here. So this is a um, elliptical border instead of a column, a vertical line like that. So what we want to do is take, um, for points outside this elliptical region, we'll use these, this image. For points inside, we'll use, oh, I'm sorry, for points outside, we'll use this one. For points inside, we use this one. And as you can see, it blends the two um, without any seams using that method of Laplacian pyramids.